use the normal approximation normal approximation to calculate the probability that x is greater than or equal to 21 for n equals 39 and p equals 0.5. So when working with a normal approximation, of course, you should draw the bell curve, right? And then as we saw in the last video, you want to calculate the mean and the standard deviation using the formulas for binomial probability. Okay, so we're going to need to get the mean and the standard deviation for the problem. So our mean, remember, is n times p that's under the binomial probability formula, right? So n times p is going to be 39 times 0.5. And of course, it's going to give you half of 39. So in this case, we'll end up with 19.5. Okay, so we have the answer 19.5. Then we're going to do standard deviation as the square root of n times p times q. Well, for us, that's going to be 39 times 0.5 times 0.5. Remember, P and Q must add up to 100%, so if P is 50%, Q must be 50%. Let's work that out in our calculator, see what we get for the standard deviation. Okay, so we'll have the square root of uh, 39 times 0.5 times 0.5. Close up your parentheses, and we get 3.1, so approximately 3.122. Okay, so we'll give it three decimal places there, plug that in for our standard deviation. 3.122, the mean here is 19.5. Okay, now from there, our next step is to take the z-axis and x-axis and label our means. So our mean for z is zero, the mean for x is 19.5, where x is the number of successes, right, out of 39 trials. And we want that number to be greater than or equal to 21. So 21 would be on this side of the curve, right? And of course, if I said greater than 21 or equal to 21, I would have a line here at 21 and you'd be thinking I would find the area in the tail. But that's assuming that we're doing the problem with a straight Z curve. And we're forgetting about, in this case, the continuity correction that needs to be done to make it fit for the binomial curve. So to improve the approximation, we're going to use something called continuity correction, which we discussed in the concept video and in the video prior to this one. So remember what you want to do with continuity correction is you want to start, if you're sweeping to the right here to accumulate all the area to the right, we're going to start just a little before 21. We're going to take, in other words, 0.5 away from it. So we're not going to use 21, but rather we will use the number 20.5. So just a little before 21, right? Just a little bit before. So right before 21 is 20.5 on the number line. We'll use that number, or in other words, we'll take 0.5 from 21 and end up with 20.5. We'll use that number to convert into a z-score, and that's the number we'll actually look up on our chart. So let's convert our 20.5 into a z-score. So the formula is x minus the mean over sigma. So we'll plug in 20.5 minus 19.5 divided by 3.122. All right, from 20.5 to 19.5, it's a distance of one, so we're gonna end up having one divided by 3.122. All right, let's work that out in our calculator to see what we get. Now, if you wanna do it all in one step for problems where the subtraction on top is not so easy, we'll do 20.5 minus 19.5 like that, and then divide by 3.122. Or you could have just done the subtraction on top in your head and divided it by 3.122. Either way, you get the answer 0 0.32 in this case, 0.32. That's the number we're going to look up, 0 0.32. Remember, it has to be rounded to two decimal places to use our Z table. All right, let's go to our Z table now and look at 0 0.32 and see what area we get for that part from here to here. Remember, that's the area we get. We have to do 0 0.5 minus that area to get the area in the tail. Okay, so we're on the z-table looking at 0.32. There's 0.3 and over to where the second column or the third column with 0.02 is at, we have 0 0.1255, 0 0.1255. It's okay, so from the table we got the answer 0.1255. And then to get the tail area we'll do 0 0.5 minus 0.1255. All right, when we do the subtraction, of course, we borrow here. We get 4, 9, 9, 10. So 10 minus 5 is 5. Uh, 9 minus 5 is 4. Uh, 9 minus 2 is 7. 4 minus 1 is 3. So the answer is 37.45%. So the probability that 
x is greater than 21 is approximately equal to 37.45%. Okay, so there it is. Now, um, if you want to know how good these approximations are, um, I'll tell you this, that they're actually very good, especially when the p is 0.5. To demonstrate that, let's look at my graphing calculator here. And I've written a program that actually do this. The graphing calculator has its own program in there, but I've, I've written my own actually, which I think is a little better. But I'll type in binomial probability for my program menu. I hit enter. It wants to know what n I'm dealing with. Well, in this case, I'm dealing with 39. It wants to know what the probability is, so I'll give it 0.5. And then it's going to ask me what x value. So I'm looking for something related to 21. And you can see I'm looking for greater than or equal to that. So 21 or more basically. And then I have wording here. So if I want 21 or more, I push option one and there's my answer. It gives me the answer 0 0.3746, 0 0.3746. So you can see we're just one ten thousandth of a percent off, or sorry, one ten thousandth of a decimal place off when we're talking about over here, right? It's one ten thousandth of a place off. And of course, it's you know one hundredth of one percent off. So it's really quite good. The thirty-seven forty-six is real close to the approximated value that we get here. So this is the actual value, and that's the approximated value. And the two numbers are really, really close.